A massive thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you need your own website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner. Oh my goodness! Who is this now? Deciding to come out in this crazy weather. <laughs> we have got, feels like 30 mile an hour winds or something when I checked. It feels a lot stronger than that, but if you can just look, it's a beautiful evening. We've got the sun setting over Morecambe Bay. Didn't fancy going up in the fells uh, in this wind <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, and yeah, th this is a location that I've been to before, quite near a spot called Sunderland Point. And we've just got all these gorgeous salt marshes here, channels um, leading out into the beach and off into in this instance the sunset so lots of opportunities for landscape photography um, i've got my nikon z7 with me as always and i just want to talk a little bit today um, during this photo shoot if you will about the differences between my nikon z7 and my old nikon d7200 crop sensor up to full frame i must admit i'm not like you know if you watch me regularly i'm not mad into my gear um, but I do find this fairly interesting. The main reason I'm making this video is because I, I, I keep getting so many questions off you guys that um, I just I can't respond to them all. So I thought if I make this video, we can talk about it. Obviously, it has been an upgrade. There's going to be um, a fair th few things that I'm finding that are a lot better with the Nikon Z7. But I want to take this opportunity to chat to you about them a little bit. Whilst I try and find some photographs, that we are about an hour and a half till the sunset. That is looking stunning already. Look at all these lovely little channels like this. There's got to be at least one or two photographs for the evening. So I'm going to, I don't know, scour around these salt marshes. Basically just looking for foreground, really, because that is absolutely wonderful. And we'll chat a little bit about the Nikon Z7 and the D7200. Let's crack on. <laughs> So I'm just gonna say this now, I have to say it. It might be a little bit too windy. <laughs> we are getting battered because we're on this, the, the coast here of Morecambe Bay. These salt marshes are just exposed. There's nowhere to hide. I think the only thing that's keeping me inspired is this wonderful light, which you can probably tell is getting better by the minute. So we're about an hour till sunset. Um, I'm not gonna take a photograph just yet. I wanna start talking about the Nikon Z7 versus the Nikon D7200 full frame versus crop sensor. And that is what I want to get out of the way first. Of course, it's like, you know, it's a better camera in the sense of image quality, let's say. It's got a bigger sensor. We all know that. I don't want to get into that because it's proper boring. It's such a boring topic, isn't it? And if you don't know that already, a quick Google search will tell you what you want to know. But when you are asking me the question, how are you getting on with the Z7 compared to the D7200? I think what you mean is like, how much better is it you know how are you getting on with it um the only like thing that is better about this with it being a full frame genuinely is just the image quality is better that's it anything else that's better about this compared to the d7200 is just the fact that it's newer and i'll get into a few of those things in this video you know it's it's new technology of course there's loads of little things that are going to be better but yeah the exclusively full frame versus crop sensor, which I guess is why you buy a camera, isn't it? For the most part, is for the sensor. Um, yes, the image quality is better. Now, as to how much better it is, I'm not bothered about like, uh, you know, pixel peeping and really getting into the science of it. I'll try and answer it like this. Yes, it's better, but I was always happy with my A2 size prints. Uh, from my D7200. Yes, they look a little bit better on this, but I tell you what, it hasn't blown my mind. I know a lot of it can be down to lenses and stuff like that. A lot of people won't like me saying that, but what do you want me to say? Like, I haven't like started shooting with this and been, whoa, wow, look, the image quality is so much better. Um, yeah, it's like a little bit better if I'm zooming in on Lightroom. Uh, the corners look better. I'll definitely say that. The corners of the images on my D7200 were sometimes a little bit blurry almost but again that might be down to lenses and things like that um but yeah this setup that i've got now lovely and sharp 
couldn't really ask for more to be honest anything more would be overkill but then this is i can't answer this question for the most part it's down to your individual situation what do you do with your, your photographs if you just put them on instagram just use your phone like you know if you just put them on your website um in a portfolio even a phone for that would be fine you know this camera that's filming me now olympus em1 mark ii is micro four thirds i'd be happy printing off it up to a2 with that camera with that sensor um you know so it's down to what do you do do you print massive billboard things then yes get yourself a 45 megapixel odd camera um but yeah don't get sucked into it too much like but i want to go and find a photograph now and then talk a little bit about a few of these mod cons that i do really genuinely love with this camera um and that i'm proper getting on with so now that's all out of the way let's go and try and find something to photograph because this light isn't getting any worse let me tell you <laughs> Right, we are set up. Um, I think this is going to be a decent little photograph to start off the evening. I do want that sun to drop down just a little bit more um, so that light isn't quite as harsh. I wouldn't call it harsh at the minute, it's quite dramatic. But you know yourself, once that starts, once the sun starts coming down more towards the horizon, it just gets better. Um, so I found this nice little channel here, right? And it's a nice little S curve that leads us out there or thereabouts into the sun and that's my only sort of gripe with this particular composition is it doesn't lead us perfectly into where the sun is just in the sort of general area where we've got all of that dramatic light but i'm going to take it anyway so i'm zoomed in slightly at 35 mil i don't like any of this um sort of immediate foreground here it's a little bit too muddy and messy and i'm trying to keep this quite simplistic whoa it's actually gone really nice We've got this where the sun is kind of casting rays. The sun's behind a cloud and it's casting rays up, down, left and right all over the shop. So it's so dramatic. You know what, guys? This is going to be really cool. <laughs> I've changed. The light has changed my opinion on this composition altogether. That is class. Um, so let me mention a couple of different things that I really like about the Z7. By the way, I'm not... On one hand, I don't like encouraging people to go out and spend money, especially when it's thousands of pounds. But on the other hand, this is a quality camera. If you can afford it, I recommend it. It's been absolutely unreal. As much as I did love my D7200, as much as I might claim that I'm not that bothered about image quality and all that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is class. It's well good. You know, and a photographer once said to me, if you can afford it, why wouldn't you? It's the same as any technology, isn't it? If you could have, if, if, I don't know, if, if you're into cars and you, you want a really cool car because it's your hobby, you're into that sort of thing, why wouldn't you get it? And my justification, this is the only thing I will say, I do this for a living. I do this full time. You know, I don't have to justify getting a nice camera to myself or to anybody else. But unfortunately, I'm just that type of person. I don't like going out and spending loads of money. So my justification was that I do this for a living. So I'm not going to try and encourage somebody that's brand new into photography to go out and spend, what is it, like over two or three grand, the whole system that I've got. Um, and again, it goes back to what I said before, guys. What, it's, it's your choice, you know. What is your individual circumstance? What is your budget? What do you want from your photography, you know? And like I said, how big do you want to print and all that sort of stuff? Anything that I'm going to talk about now, it's just mod cons little things that make my life a little bit easier as a photographer so the first thing is this the live histogram man i think <laughs> probably within the first year of being into photography i was i just really wanted a live histogram guys and again you don't need it you know if you don't have a live histogram you take your photograph and you check your histogram on your preview but i just love seeing my little histogram there on my live view or through the evf on the Nikon Z7, it's quality, it's so good just to know where you're at. Now I'm looking at this particular histogram and it's a real high dynamic range, but I know that. So it means I know, right, I'll take two shots here. I'll take one shot like this, that's bracketed for the foreground or exposed for the foreground. 
and then I'll darken it down to one two hundredth of a second, take a second shot like this, and that's my shot for the sky, and then I'll blend them together. And it's so nice not having to check my histogram on my preview, you know. Um, before I show you this shot, another thing that I really like, I use this quite a lot. If you watch me regularly, you'll know I use this quite a lot. Um, you can choose the image area on the Nikon Z7. Again, this isn't exclusive to full frame or the Nikon Z7. It's just the fact that it's a modern camera. My video camera can do it there, Olympus EM1 Mark II, like I said, and that is a micro four thirds. The sensor size, you know, it, 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 there's no connection between the size of the sensor and the, 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 how modern your camera is. Um, but choosing the image area is wonderful. I can choose like normal full frame. I could choose like a five by four crop, a square one by one crop, a 16 by nine crop. And I find myself using that all quite a lot. But again, same as the live histogram, you know, it's not, you know, it's not mandatory. You don't need it. You could just take a shot in your normal crop on your camera and then crop it when you get it back into Lightroom. But it's just nice to have it, you know. So they're the first couple of things that I want to mention. But, ooh, I think this little photograph here is going to be quite decent. I hope you like it. Oh, so, fingers crossed, that beast came out, all right, that image. Uh, the sun looks like it's starting to go behind them clouds a little bit more now, so I would like to get a move on and try and find another photograph. Before I carry on, I wanted, of course, to say, as always, another huge thank you to Squarespace for kindly sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate their support. If you don't know who they are, it's a service or a platform where you can create your own website and its biggest pull factor for me is that it's proper easy to do it. Um, I always like to say this, but I have used them for nearly three years now, paid for with my own money. Yes, they sponsor me, but it's a service that I have paid for uh, very gladly for nearly three years, like I've said. Um, they've got a lot of wonderful templates, which I realize I say that a lot, but a lot of you might not know what that means. So I'll show you on screen now. Basically, sort of like, um, they, do, they do most of the work for you. So you've got this template that you can use. You'll find one that's right for you, and then you can customize that template for your website more so after that, you know. It's, it's class, it's absolutely class. I found one really quickly for mine. Um, absolutely wonderful. I realized before I was speaking about what do you use your images for, Squarespace is also a really good place where you can have a portfolio of your images as well. I don't really use Instagram and stuff like that that much anymore, so I'm really happy. We, I've actually got it as like my print page on my website, which I've got a 30% off sale <laughs> at the moment, by the way, on all my prints, limited and standard edition. But yeah, I really like my portfolio or prints page on my Squarespace website. And um, the customer service is absolutely fantastic as well. It's something that I always have to mention. I've hit a couple of speed bumps along the way and Squarespace have always been there to help me out, so I highly recommend them. If you wanna give them a go, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner and use the offer code Henry Turner for 10% off your first purchase. Absolute beast. All that info will be in the video description below as well. Right, as you can see, the sun is still out. Probably can't see because it's overexposed. <laughs> Well, let's see if we can get another photograph and we'll chat a little bit more about the Nikon Z7 as well. Let's crack on. So the, the wind's getting to me. It's getting to me now, I must, I must admit. <laughs> At least when you're on the fells, yes, you are exposed for the most part, but you can always find a little bit of shelter. Anyway, I'm set up here for another shot, second shot of the evening. And how do I say this now? It's gonna be quite similar, but also a little bit different. <laughs> um, basically, the light, the sun has gone behind a lot of cloud that has come in over Morecambe Bay there. So we're not gonna have the dramatic light, but I'm seeing that as, as a good thing for the most part, because it's just gonna make this a little bit of a different scene. It's really blue. 
you know, we've got a lot of blue sky above us and that must just be like getting reflected down into the water. Um, but it looks quite cool, you know, I like it. It looks really nice on the back of the, uh, the camera. On the LCD screen actually, which is another thing, I really do like the LCD screen on the Nikon Z7. Again, of course, it's just another little thing with a modern camera. Of course, it's going to be better than the, the D7200 just because it's newer. But it definitely helps me compose my photographs a lot more, you know. Um, so for this particular composition, we've just got a lot of dramatic clouds. Like I said, not much dramatic light, um, but loads of these kind of wouldn't really know what to call them. We're at the end of the salt marsh where it meets um, the beach, the water, and we've got all these little bumps <laughs> here in the foreground and I'm zoomed right out at 24 mil with the 24 to 200 lens on the front of the Nikon Z7. ISO 64 F11 and one tenth of a second. One tenth of a second, it shows you that it's darkened down quite a lot. And I'm just focusing down here in the foreground on some of these bumps. Um, and that's that really. I think I, I think I probably would like to long exposure this because we're getting a few ripples in the foreground but at the same time looking at it there I think I quite like that and it certainly tells the story of this wind. Let's just say that. So let's grab another one of them now and uh, the, the sky is actually if you look at for darken that down a little bit if you look behind me look at the sky up there it's weird like in the opposite direction it's going this kind of nice magenta colour that might be worth sticking around for. We'll see. But we'll grab this one. Boosh. And uh, I'll get that again. Two second timer. And yeah, this one will be a little bit different. But it's nice to get something a little bit different because this is obviously going to be quite a samey sort of landscape, isn't it? There's only so much you can capture. Oh, them clouds are looking cool up there. You know what the worst thing is about the salt marshes here? As, as nice as they are, all these channels, you know, you might say, right, I want to go over there, but it's just a complete maze <laughs> of all these little channels and, and so, sort of ditches. And it's proper dodgy because you've got to jump over them to get to where you want to go, but you need to be careful at the same time. Um, right, a couple more things about the Z7. And again, these aren't exclusive to full frame, certainly, and they're not exclusive to the Z7. It's just a couple more things that I really like about having this camera and this camera system, this camera setup, whatever you want to call it. Um, firstly, it's a proper good video camera as well. Let's get it out, shall we? The Z7, it's a really capable, very capable video camera. You know, 4K, it's got image stabilization. These things I really do think about. I don't use it for video a lot, but I may do in the future. Um, also, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to get it out because it's too windy. Throw my bag on the floor. Um, the flip screen on it is uh, it's mad because I remember making a video about my D7200 a couple of years ago and everything that I'm saying now I love about this are things that I, I, I said in that video that I really wanted out of a camera. A flip screen, good video capabilities, a live histogram and now I've got them. It's absolutely class. Uh, but yeah, the flip screen's really cool when you're at a low angle. You know, you're down low and um, you don't have to stoop down so much to be able to see your live view properly, you know, your LCD screen, that's super helpful. But yeah, again, I just want to re reiterate a couple of things. Like, it's so individual. Like, it's hard for me to answer a lot of these questions that you ask me because I don't know what your situation is. So you have to sit down literally with a pen and a paper and just write down what you want from a camera, figure out your budget and just sort of go from there, you know. But I loved my Nikon D7200, but to be honest, I just hit a point where I broke it, for starters, and I just felt like I wanted to treat myself. That, that, that was my story, you know, I just wanted to treat myself. Because at the same time, I don't like it. Landscape photography, I find, is such a positive community. Very, very, very supportive, very positive. Uh, but the one thing that I really hate hearing and I'm probably guilty of this as well, we probably all are, is when people say like, ah, the gear doesn't matter that much, but then they've got a mint camera like me. It just doesn't really make sense, does it? And I don't think it's, it, imagine a beginner hearing that, and I'm shooting with a Nikon Z7, it's madness. They're, they're gonna think, what are you on about, mate? What are you on about? 
It's like, I don't like, I'm not really into cars. Uh, they don't really matter, but I've got myself a Lamborghini. Just doesn't make sense, does it? Um, but yeah, that's why I think it's just so individual based. You know what, guys? I think the wind's proper beating me tonight. I do apologize, but I'm going home. It looks well nice over there towards the forest of Boland as well. Some light on the fells. The light, the sun's going behind clouds now as well, so it's like a nice excuse that I can say. The sun's gone now, but no, the wind's battered me, to be honest. And there's only so much I can chat about cameras and gear until I just get a bit bored, to be honest. That's all I can say. That's all I can say, but I don't like ignoring yous. I appreciate the questions that you asked me so much. Um, but yeah, I suppose that's been the overriding theme that I've been saying in this video, isn't it? You have to, you have to make up your own mind. I can't, I can't help you. <laughs> but no, both mint cameras. And uh, anyway, I'm going home, getting out of this wind. Thank you so much for watching. Apologies, a little bit of a short one this week. Always appreciate your support. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Out! Out!